Good morning, everybody. We are going to be looking at working with Plone and getting started with your Plone site. Uh, so my name is David Bain and I have been using Plone for many years. Today, we're going to be looking at the new version of Plone, which has a new user interface. And I'm going to bring up my slides so that you can see how this system works. Okay. Great, so the topic is getting started with your Plone 6 site. And we're focused on people who would be editing and managing Plone 6 sites. I, I'm going to start with an intro, which this is part of that intro now. And then we will follow on with a little bit about Plone so that we set the context. Then I will do a demo and what we consider first steps. After that, we're going to look at content management and specifically uh, the, uh, the new way of doing it. You also want to become comfortable with user and group management. So look a little bit at that. And then we're going to take on a challenge of using the out of the box features of the new user interface to see if we can replicate. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be a perfect copy, but we're going to uh, implement some of the features that are on the plone.org website. And then we'll do a review and we'll talk about well, what are the next best steps. I should say welcome to everybody who's here. And we will begin. What is out of scope for this presentation? We will not be looking at installing add-ons. We're not going to be talking about theming and we're not going to be talking about custom content types. So just, just to be clear so that everybody understands where we're going, um, we will talk about content management, user and group management and some of the things around that. We're also focusing on the out of the box features. And so this is why we're not uh, worried about add-ons. A little bit of housekeeping. Uh, please stop me to ask questions when you have them. Uh, I, you can raise your hand and I will acknowledge you. Uh, tell me if I'm speaking too fast or too slow or not loud enough. The material is about three hours or three and a half hours, depending on how quickly we go through it. And we'll take two breaks. Uh, there, are, there may be some errors. This particular presentation is edited from an older presentation with an older version of Clone. So maybe we'll see one slide that may still have that older version. Hopefully I was thorough enough and got rid of all of those slides. Uh, 
and you can contact me at my email address if you want to follow up with anything or if you have any questions. And the slides are available. So if you're looking at my screen, at the bottom of my screen, there is a link to the slides. A couple of things that we're assuming here, we assume that you're familiar with the following terms. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about those terms because we're going to be using them throughout this workshop. So uh, yeah, with hopefully you know a little bit about Plone, you know what a URL is, what a website is, and what a web page is. Um, we don't expect you to know a lot about Plone at this point. Um, so just a quick reference. This is a browser. A browser has an address bar and URLs are typed into the address bar. And those addresses carry you to websites. And websites are composed of web pages. Uh, for the vocabulary for Plone, we, we will talk a bit about content types. Also look out for the word blocks, which are now the, the, the smart, the components that are used to create pages. I will sometimes use the word item during this presentation, and I almost always mean a, a page. And a page can be of any type. So it, it could be a news item, or it could be an event, or it could be a standard page. But just for a generic term, I'll sometimes use the term item. OK. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll pause here, and I see um is this Josef has joined let's give you a chance to say hi is it Josef hello hi hello hi, David Josef I, I'm pronouncing the name correctly because I, yeah, I know okay. I know I've seen the name and the spelling, but I I don't know if I have it right. <laughs> yeah, the name is okay. Okay, great, 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 great. Uh, uh, do you have any um, expectations for this uh, workshop in terms of what you hope to get out of it? No, I I uh, I have a uh, other expectation and and I won't go out of it because I won't see an um, tutorial uh, to react. Walter. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this, this is probably very uh, straightforward for you. Oh, <laughs> it's the false. <laughs> okay. Ciao. It's okay. Thank okay. you. Sorry, no problem. Okay. All right. So we are going to continue with what is Plone. Plone is an enterprise content management system. And to, to put that in perhaps clearer terms, it allows uh, non-technical people to create and maintain information-rich websites or intranets. It's very focused on making it easy to get content up. Uh, and also being able to control who can do what with the content who's allowed to publish it, who's allowed to view it and how it's shared and so on. 
So it, it captures all those aspects of content management. So at, at the heart of Plone, it's about how do you get content up onto the web? That's almost always what you're trying to do. And that content could be text, it could be images, uh, it could be a news item, which sometimes combines text and images. And content has different purposes, as you can imagine. Uh, content could be um, even a form that someone can fill out. Here are some of the types of content that are fairly common to add to a Plone site. And Plone helps you to organize and distinguish between those types of content. And we, we often refer to the whole thing as content, uh, just for simplicity, hence content management. Plone has an approach to content management of organizing things into folders. So it feels a lot like how you might organize things in folders on your desktop machine or your laptop. Uh, your content can be rendered individually or you can combine bits of content. And with the new user interface, combining content is a, a lot easier than it was with the old system. Uh, but we still have this idea of a single page and what we call listing pages, where multiple things are shown on, on one page. And it often links you from one thing to another. The listing pages tend to take the title and the description, sometimes called the summary and present the title and description on the listing page. Uh, just a note, we, we have used Plone a lot, especially on uh, bigger, more complex projects because of its flexibility and feature set. Uh, if you have a team of users, it's a good time to think about using Plone. It's not as it's not as critical if you have, if you're a one person, um, but if you have varied roles and editors and different permissions, um, right away, it makes a lot of sense to think about Plone for your platform. Uh, and we have used Plone for different projects in the past because of that flexibility and the ability to support multiple users and permissions and roles and so on. <clears throat> if you need more information about Plone, you want to go to the Plone site. Uh, there's also Plone documentation and there's a Plone training site where you can find training like this as well as um, more advanced training for theming and for development and for other things. So uh, Plone 6 represents a new release. And there are a couple of things you will want to know about this. Uh, Plone 6 is in alpha. So we don't have the final release yet, but we have a very good idea of what the final release will look like. And it introduces a new user interface as the default interface. It's um, based around a system called Volto, which was designed to provide a modern interface on top of Plone's backend. Uh, the Plone 6 front end, the, uh, the also provides something called Plone 6 Classic. Um, this is the older user interface, and 
if you are an organization that has invested in Plone and want to continue using the older interface, you can still upgrade to Plone 6 and continue to use Plone Classic. Uh, there's some trade-offs between Classic and the new user interface. And I'll uh, hopefully at least one of those things I'll mention later on in this presentation. All right. At this point, we're going to do a little bit of a demo and what I call first steps. And then after that, we'll take our first break. So let's go to a Plone 6 site and Let's look at the new section. And this is a default Clone 6 site. And we want to ask a few questions. What's, what's the, how is the URL organized for Clone 6 sites? And then we'll visit a few more sections and see if we can pick up a pattern. OK, so I do have a few Clone sites up and running. Let's see if we can spin up another one. So Let me share my screen so you can see that. There we go. So here is a clone six site. Uh, as you can see, it has a new user interface if 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 you've worked with classic clone let's take a look at the news section what i really want to focus on is actually the url here um, plone tends to use human friendly urls and so as you navigate through the site you'll find that the urls map pretty neatly with what you're looking at. So if you're at events, you can expect to go to slash events. And uh, this, is, this is peculiar with Plone. Um, other systems, you need to create uh, what you call slugs and things like that to map a human-friendly URL to some other backend address. This is not the case with Plone. It doesn't require any new layers or anything to do that. This is a feature of Plone. And as you see, as we navigate through the site, um, that is reflected. Okay, I'm going to go back to my slides. All right, so, so that's a pattern that I just wanted to point out very early so that you're aware of it as you look. The other thing I want um, us to pay attention to is the fact that Plone, often the pages that you go to are organized with a title, a description, and main text. This is another common pattern in, in the back end. The fields that are most common are title description and main text or body text. And most content types conform to that type of 
arrangement. So that's something to pay attention to when looking at even the structure of individual items within Plon. As, as I said previously, URLs in Plone reflect the way content is organized within your site. Um, and so you can read this and make some judgments about what's happening here. So for example, this must be a news section, perhaps this is a 2020 news and you might expect to have a 2019 and a 2021. Uh, in this example, this is again news with 2017 news and specific news about submitting talks for a conference. Again, these, these URLs follow the titles and you can, you can make your own judgment about what's happening here. Let's talk about logging in to Plone. If you need to log into your Plone site, one quick shortcut is just go to slash login. Um, that URL will bring up a login box and you can put in your username and password that you've been provided with. Uh, if you need to log out, you should be able to do one of two things. You can actually type slash logout uh, in front of your site URL and that will log you out. Or you can click on your avatar and that brings up a log out button, which you can see in this screenshot. So let's look at the process of logging in and logging out. I'm going to go to the, a demo site, the Plone 6 demo site, which is available on the internet. And let's, let's see how that goes. So let me share. six.demo.plone.org. I'm going, to, I'm going to log in. Now I clicked login, but I could just as well have typed login and it would get me to the site as well. Then I'm going to put my password and I am logged in. The process of logging out is similar. So let's, let's go about that. We're going to go to my avatar or my, my user profile, and we're going to click log out and we're logged out. Let me log in one more time, just to illustrate that there are other ways to do the same thing. And one way is to just type log out in the URL and that will log you out as well. Okay. I'm going to go back to my slides.
just having a little issue navigating there. Uh, so here's an interesting question. What happens if you're already logged in and you visit login again? And also it, it would be interesting to find out what happens when you put the wrong credentials in when you attempt to log in. So let's let's try that just, just to get a little more familiar with the login mechanism and so on. So I'm going to head over to that share and we are going to see what happens if we try to log in again if we've already logged in it's mostly just so that you can become familiar with that uh, so we're already within the site navigating around now we're going to say slash login and indeed it does present you with a login screen again um, it doesn't mean you're not logged in but this page is the login screen and so it will show you it again um, and if you attempt to log in it should just work The other question that we had was what happens when you put the wrong credentials in? So let's log out. And we're going to put the wrong credentials. So we're going to put um, at the user and see what happens. And as you see there at the bottom of the screen, both email, um, check that cap lock is not enabled effectively, login failed. And if you've used classic clone, this is the same type of message that you would get. Okay. We are going to move on. All right, preferences. In Plone, it's possible to manage your profile and your preferences. And those are available under your uh, user avatar. So once you click your user, you will be provided with a box that looks similar to the one on the screen there. And the only setting at the moment is language, but you can change your default language. I expect that in the future, as we move out of alpha, you will see other settings. For example, in the Plone Classic UI, one of the things that you'd find underneath there is the ability to change your password. Profile. If you need to do your profile, change your portrait, full name, email, etc., you can find that under the profile option. So these are some of the things that you can manage. And just as an exercise, we're going to try that out. Okay, so I am going to pay share this login page that I'm at. Great. Now I, I already have 
a page ready for this exercise. So I'm going to use that. I'm already logged in to this page and I can set my profile. So in this case, I can say, and my email address. And I can set a portrait. So I'm going to see if I have, uh, I guess I could steal the one that we already have on the clone site. So, So clone conf. I should, it should have a picture that I could use. I mean, for demo, I suppose I don't have to use my own picture, but it is there. So save image. Okay, so let's do this again. Wonderful. Nice, so this shows up here. And the, depending on how you're working with profiles, you may want to show user profiles and their photos, maybe on a, on a page and in an intranet or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so let us continue. Okay, at this point, we're going to take a short break and we'll come back in about 10 minutes. So you can set a timer. Um, I may, we may make this a little shorter, but we're just going to take a little break now and then come back. content management with the new clone user interface for clone six. Right, uh, always good to have a little definition. And I like to think about content management as not just the content, uh, but it also affects the users and even the timing. So this definition kind of aims to talk about all aspects of content management. Uh, in, in its simplest form, content management is, can a user make content private and public? But that's a very, very, very simple um, use case. There are certainly more involved use cases. And once you start thinking about all of those use cases, you have to start thinking about um, the create, edit, publish, delete life cycle. 
And within that life cycle, you have to think about the people involved. So that's going to be your users and the content is your information. And sometimes your con the information can be meta, meaning information about your content. All of those are things that are important. The where is also important. Content can be in several different places within your site. It's not simply that you just dump it all into one giant folder. The some amount of uh, reason and, and logic can go into how you arrange your content. <clears throat> and the, the content lifecycle accounts for publication. Uh, when is it when is it go live? Is it scheduled to go live or is it just going to uh, go live as soon as you finish publishing? Uh, and when is it removed, archived or deleted? So all of those are important considerations. And of course, who can do what? So it's not just that you have users. Users have different permissions and all of those are important considerations. Okay, so <clears throat> in the clone world, a content type is what distinguishes the type of information that you're looking at. There are other ways of determining or distinguishing type of information. One, another way that is sometimes used in Plon and with other content management systems is to use tags or subjects. So you have different bits, different items, and they are categorized based on the tags. Uh, and that's fine. But in addition to that, one of the ways that is really good with clone is content types, because every content type can be distinguished from every other content type. So it's a very important concept. Uh, <clears throat> content types are added through the add menu. And as you can see here, we have a couple of different types of content. Uh, and these are the common ones. And then we have some special ones among these, which, which are special because they can contain other content. So a collection um, serves to aggregate content based on criteria. And a folder aggregates content that it holds within itself. So they, they behave slightly differently, but effectively they act in a what is sometimes referred to as a containerish manner. All right, so we're going to do a little exercise where we talk a little bit about these content types and see if we can spot the content type. Uh, we have the very common ones, news items, pages, events, files, and folders, and of course, collections. We're going to browse around the plone.org website and see Based on just looking at the URLs and let's see, with our best guess, and it's okay if we're wrong, the, the point of the exercise is to maybe look at the purpose of sections of the site and think and say, what, how best could this have been done? And, and you can share the URLs you've found. So, um, 
So let's head to clone.org. Okay, here we are at clone.org and let us browse around for a little while and see if we can kind of make sense of some of the things we're seeing. So I'm going to go to this link here. It says latest news. And as you see, Within this link, there are several news items. Based on that, I think it's reasonable to think about this as probably a folder. But I could be wrong. It could also be a collection uh, or it could be both. It could be a folder that has a collection. Uh, as you can see here, this is definitely a news item. It's a single item with news about clone and it sits down in a folder. So for sure, the 2021 news is more than likely a folder. That kind of makes sense. And we should be able to predict that there will be a folder for 2020, uh, depending on when this structure started, we may even have 2019. and perhaps 2018, but we'll, we'll stop there. So folders are a good way to organize things. And my guess is that what we're seeing here is a collection. And why do I say that? Because what, what's happening here is these collections are, or these items will probably change from month to month and from year to year. And there's probably a query that pulls the most recent news items here, uh, which is a collection way of doing things. If these items need to be manually placed here, that would be quite inconvenient. And so I suspect we have a collection here. Uh, basically an aggregation based on a set of criteria. Okay, so we're going to head back to our slides. And continue. So one of the things we said, just, just to remind you, Clone has a folder-based approach. Content tends to be arranged in folders, just like you might see on your desktop or your laptop. Uh, Clone focuses very much on in-context management. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little more. So you tend to navigate to where you need to edit. Uh, there are some systems where content is managed centrally in a dashboard and things are not organized into folders. Um, interestingly, you can probably do both with clone. You could set up a dashboard with items that need to be edited. Um, and I've seen that done. However, it's almost more common to navigate to the news section in order to work with your news. 
and the same would be true for your events and so on. So three key things that we looked at on the content management, um, the idea of content types, folder-based approach, and in-context management, editing context, editing items within the context where they exist. Right. So now that we've looked at some of these principles, let's actually add some news items, uh, some pages, some images, and perhaps a file. So let's try that out and just see what that process looks like. So here we are on my clone site, and I am going to start out by adding a news item. Now, you can, for most things, most items, you can probably just add them right there, right? Uh, so I could click news item, and it will be added right here in this context. However, I would much prefer to have my news organized a little more. So at minimum, I want to have them in the news folder. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add my news to the news folder. So news item, let's borrow some news from the plan site. So I'm going to grab this picture. And here's my headline. So let's put our headline here. This would be the summary or the description. So we're going to put that here. And here is the text. So this is going to be interesting because when I paste this, I, I use a shortcut called paste and match style. But effectively what we've done is added all the text. And for now, let's, let's leave it at that. Um, let's add our lead image. And We won't put an image caption for now, but we'll save this. And we've created our first news item. Obviously it doesn't have all the styles and stuff and we can, we can fix that. So let's at least put in some, some headings. So where it says some highlights, I can make that a heading. Uh, these are supposed to be bullet points all the way down to use dexterity for clone site object root.
And we can make that a bullet list. By the way, I, I did this on purpose. I, I decided not to highlight the whole thing because it helps you to grasp that some styles are what we call um, block level. So the entire block is affected by the style. So I think every style to the right of this line is a block level style. The, the changes that we make here are only going to be made to what we highlight. So sometimes that's referred to as a character level style. Um, there may be another word for it. Uh, but it, 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 it explains what it affects. Okay. All right. So I'm going to save that. And it's starting to look like something sensible. All right. Let's go back to our slides. to just remind ourselves of what we want to look at next. So we want to talk about adding just a normal page. And then images and files, OK? So let's go back and See what we can do. So for this, I will probably add a folder. This folder will be called something like pages or articles. Few articles we've written. And I'm going to save that. Uh, just like Plone Classic UI, with Plone 6, you'll notice that as you add content, it shows up, at least if you add it to the top level, it will show up in the menu here. All right, so let us add to this folder a page. Okay, see if we have any useful article, maybe something from getting started. How about this test drive clone? No, that's going to take us not where we want to go. Yeah, all of this is taking us off or away, not what I want. Let's see if maybe conferences. Right, and then conference is an event, so how about something about the Plone Foundation? About the foundation. This looks like it would be a page. Great. So let's do this. Right.
Okay, we have this wonderful image, so let's make use of it. So we're going to do our image. We can just do that. Let's add some text here. And as you see, our, our page is taking shape. Goals and objectives. Okay, so we'll save that. And now we have within our website an article about the Flown Foundation. In their picture, it's aligned to the left. Let's see, we should be able to change the alignment. That this setting will be found in the block menu so we're editing a block and sometimes there's some context available right there in the menu <clears throat> i don't think that's quite what we're going to want it to achieve but it's an interesting look <clears throat> So we'll we'll work with it. <clears throat> okay. So let's go back to the slides. We actually have added images already, but there were images that were associated directly with content types. There is a way to add just standalone images and standalone files. So let's look at doing that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so for my images, I like to have a special folder. Uh, just for media. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a folder. And call it media. And then in that media folder, I can start thinking about 
images and things like that. We've downloaded a couple of images already. So let's see what we got. All right, so that's one image. Notice it's located in the media folder and it's in this breadcrumb here, it takes the form of the name. So in this case, um, I named this image. So it doesn't just have the image name, it has the name that I have assigned to it. Okay. <clears throat> and let's add a file. So I think this website may have some kind of So here's a budget. Let's download that budget. And we're going to add it <clears throat> to the same media folder. Just, just to show that we can. Uh, all right. Let's drag that over. Let's call it 2016 budget, which is already called anyway. And we're going to click save. So this file is now available from the website. Okay. So at this point, we have looked at news items, pages, added images and files, standalone images, standalone files. And one question that comes up quite a bit is, can I cut and paste HTML? From, from one page to another page? The answer is yes, for the most part, the HTML comes across as rich text. And when you paste it into your site, it gets converted back to that HTML. Um, and another common use case that people ask about is can I associate a link with a document that I've uploaded? Because um, if you want to make something available for download or whatever, for example, that document that we just uploaded a while ago, that PDF, we want to make sure that there is some kind of link. So we look at an example of how you might do something like that. So I'm going to do a new share and go back. All right, so that's our budget. It's in PDF. But here's, here's another situation. Suppose you wanted to put up another budget, a totally different budget. Um, let's say the 2017 budget. 
So let's download the 2017 budget. And let's say we want to make reference to that budget from our homepage. In classic clone, it would be possible for you to create a link to content, even as you're working with it. So you might say, here is the 2017 budget. I'm going to see if we can link. All right, so in this case, there is no way to, as, at least with, with this alpha release, to upload, however, we do have the 2016 budget, so let's at least make a link to that. Okay, so it's it's it looks like at least for now, for the alpha release, we will have to upload first and then connect. So that is that's something that is a trade off at the moment at least, between the classic UI and the uh, current version here. Okay. I've, I've said a couple of times that Plone is very folder centric things are placed in folders and organized and it's it's actually considered best practice to arrange the content in your plone site into folders uh, so it's not unusual to have all your photos in a photo gallery everything related to your services in a services folder and so on and the the, the hierarchy of the site is derived from that structure so I'm, I'm just reiterating that and actually have a slide that captures with a little bit too much text, but it captures that idea. Okay. Something that you will recall from classic clone, if you were a classic clone user, is the ability to change the state of content for publishing. And that is available as well with the new user interface. The approach is that you click the three dots at the bottom and it brings up this menu. And then you can specify what state do you want to move your content into. So currently it's private. Uh, you may want to make it public or to give the option of sending it for review. And this can be done through that uh, three dot interface. A few editing tips. <clears throat> if you're pasting content, sometimes the content comes with formatting that you don't want to use. A good solution is control. Instead of just control V, you add shift and that removes any rich text when you're pasting. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it's going to be command shift plus V. Of course, if you want the rich text formatting, then sure, copy, 
copy the format and paste it into the site and it will be it will look like the rich text that where you got it from we've already seen the process of adding links um, and in fact linking to a file uh, in plone when you highlight text you're provided with a context menu and from that that little menu you're able to select uh, for example link into a file um, it doesn't have to be a tough file it can link to anything you can link on on the internet uh, right so that is just kind of reiterating what we've observed in the presentation, how to do your links. And we also use the image uh, block in order to add a photo. And I'll just, just remind you what that looks like. I'm just trying to get there quickly. Right, so this image was added as part of uh, just trying to follow the Plone Foundation site or page. But it, it gave you a good idea of how images are managed inside of the new Plone user interface. You can add that image as a block. This is a block that's floated to the left, hence uh, text is flowing to the right of it, but it's still a block. All right, so that's a little bit about ed, um, adding images. One thing, when you're adding an image, it's recommended that you add alt text. So alternative text. Um, interestingly, with Plone, with the new Plone user interface, it will add alternative text if you don't put it in. It's just going to have um, alternative text from the name of the document. And I'll, I'll show you that quickly. We're going to, just to show you how the alternative text thing works. Here we are. And let's say we're going to add some, some image to this. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say add image. Let's see if we can find an image. Okay, here's an image that I made for this project. Uh, it's just a pretty pattern. And I want us to look over here and see what's going on. Notice that the alternative text is actually the same as the document title. So it defaults to the document title. I might want to give it a different name. So that's how we deal with the alternative text. Okay, so I think it's a good time to 
go on another break. So we're going to take the break a little bit early. It'll help me to catch my breath a little bit. And when we come back, we're going to continue in the content management section. And we're going to be looking at bulk uploading. How do you do a bulk upload of files and images? And how do you navigate around and cut and paste and move things around? And how do you change the view of something? Similar to what you might have seen in the Plum Classic user interface. So we'll take a break and then we'll come back and continue uh, content editing. Just perhaps we should review. Uh, by the way, Thomas, Lab, were you able to see the slides? Maybe to catch up. Well, if you look at my, let me see, I'll just not sure why the camera is not working for me, but let's stop the share. If you look at my share, you see that at the bottom, it has the address for the slides. Maybe what I should do is, well, I'm not seeing an option to pin them. But if you click on my thing and pin it, you'll see the slide address. I could also just type it in the chat. Okay, great. So you can always go there if you want to actually get, get access to the slides. Okay, so I'm going to bring the slides back up. and see if we can just quickly review where we have reached. Ah, of course, here are the slides. So we're about to go into user groups and management but it would be helpful to just take a quick look at where we're coming from. So, we started out just doing a quick overview and saying what clone is. And went through a little demo of using it uh, with the new user interface. And then we looked at content management. The next section is on users and user and group management. Uh, however, there is a little bit of content management left. So we're going to finish up the content management section and then look at users and groups. And the next thing after that is going to be a site building challenge. I'm going to give you access to your own uh, plone site and we're going to see what we can get done in maybe I would say half an hour to 40 minutes. Okay, so let us get back into content management. I think the last thing that we were looking at was 
using folders or was it publishing content? I think it was publishing content. Right. So we had spoken about the process of publishing content and so on. Right. Uh, yes, we also spoke about this and uh, adding links and using the image block. Right, so we're about to look at how do we do a bulk upload. So let us say that you already have for your clone site a bunch of images. And we do have a couple of images at the moment. I'm just going to grab a few more. I'll just grab one more image. And we we have been tasked, let's say we've been tasked with the job of maybe uploading a, a set of images into a folder. Here's how we'd go about doing that. <clears throat> So we're going to head to one of our instances. I actually have one here that I can work with. And I want to create a folder. So add folder, and I will call it images. Great. And we're going to use what is called the contents view. So if images is a folder, we should be able to view the contents of that folder. And that's what we're doing. And there is a button called upload. So what this, what you see here is a listing. Of course, we don't have any images at the moment. And we're going to click upload. And then we're just going to drag the images that we want to upload to this box. And this is just all the images that I've downloaded so far while working on the site. <clears throat> and it's going to proceed to do the upload. As you can see, all of the images have been uploaded. And I can come out of contents view and I see the images. Now that's probably not a nice way to view the images. So there are a couple other ways we could go about doing it. We could change it from listing view to album view. And we do have a couple bugs still, as you can see, album view, the the proper behavior of album view is that you'd get to see a preview of the images. That is not happening at the moment. And I don't want to put it, I don't want to blame clone six. Uh, however, it's, it's very likely the fact that this is an alpha version 
why we're not seeing this. Um, I do have access to the backend API because it does. Uh, so I do have a classic clone interface. So you can see that in classic clone, the images that I just uploaded are showing. Uh, I see there's a question or a comment. Okay. Um, so Tomislav is wondering if maybe it's it's still uh, processing. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the issue. Uh, it's, in fact, I doubt it. Not not for, for such a short, small number of images. Uh, <clears throat> so we definitely have some variation between the new user interface and the old interface. And I'm sure we'll, these, blog, these bugs will be cleaned up as we move from alpha into a stable release. Uh, right, but if we go to the content view, we know for sure that the images are definitely there. And we can view them. Similarly to, to bulk upload of images, we can do bulk upload of files as well. And I'll, I'll leave that out, but just to say it is possible. And just to review, it would be a matter of going to a folder, going to the contents view, and then using the bulk upload button within that view. And it will accept images, it will accept files as well. <clears throat> okay. Now, there are some situations where you have content in one place and you want to get it to somewhere else. And this is another thing that can be done as a bulk action. So perhaps you may want to move some of the images to somewhere else. Uh, so let's look at that. Let's say you have a second folder. And that folder's name is, I don't know, more images. We could go to the images folder and <clears throat> go to the contents view and select the images that we are interested in. And there's a cut. And then over more images, we can go to the contents view again and paste. So now we have images in both folders simply by using a cut and paste. Uh, this was the first folder. And this is the second folder. <clears throat> uh, we, we did something earlier when we created that folder and added those images. We actually used the display menu to configure how contents are displayed. <clears throat> Let's go back and see how that's done. For, for the images folder, it's a different view than for the more images folder. This is the default listing. And this should show us a list, uh, an album view of images. It actually does work with the classic user interface, which we're seeing here. So we know that it definitely works. Uh, however, it's probably a bug that needs to be sorted out so that it will work here. And how did we do that? We went to <clears throat> the more menu and under there, we were able to change the view. And we had changed it to album view. 
let's look at some review. <clears throat> so this is some review. Now, again, um, on classic clone, what would happen is you'd see thumbnail images. And I, when I was testing this, I did come across this issue where the thumbnail issue, the thumbnail images were not working and have to troubleshoot and figure out whether it was something I set up wrong or whether it's related to um, <clears throat> incoming features for Plone 6. Uh, this note here, setting an item as the default page, this, is, uh, this was a common approach and pattern with classic Plone. It's not as much encouraged with um, the current, uh, well, the Plone 6. So I will leave it at that, but you can certainly research setting an item as a default page <coughs> for yourself. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at publication. Setting restrictions. Uh, by the way, is not possible in the Plone 6 user interface. Um, the, res the restrictions approach would allow you to have a folder, for example, a folder of images, and you'd be able to say only allow images in this folder. Uh, that capability would typically be found under the add menu, and then there'd be an option called restrictions. I have not seen a comparable option, but it may, it may be there. And I guess I would have to reach out to others in the community to find out. Okay. <coughs> More blocks. So in this exercise, we want to create a, a listing block that will allow us to see a preview of items that exist in other locations throughout the site. <clears throat> so I'd love for you to follow along. So I'm going to send you a web address where you can log in. So just indicate if you're seeing that web address in the chat, because that address is set up with a version of Plone 6 and you can go ahead and log in. Um, I'll send you your credentials. Um, so you can try it out and follow along. <clears throat> oh there, apparently there's a problem. Let me, let me check to make sure that uh, the site is behaving. Let's see. Um, oh, okay. Well, I have more than one instance. So if one is down, maybe the other isn't. So you could try this one. And what we're going to be doing is just, you can just follow along with what I'm doing. Uh, just use the credentials that I've shared with you. Great. So thankfully I made several of them just in case one of them failed. So we did have a failure, but we can keep moving forward. All right, so here's what we're going to do. we are going to create an image listing. 
or well, it's not really an image listing. These are news items. But how do you do news items? How do you do this listing? Well, I'll show you what it looks like by editing the home page of this site. Oh, well, we already have one here, so that's probably not the best example, but uh, it's it's still worth looking at. Um, what we have here is called a listing item or a listing block more accurately. So you would add a listing block. Obviously it would have to only find news items or whatever you want. Let's say in my case, I wanted a criteria of type, uh, maybe images. So it will only find images throughout the site. And you have different variations of how it shows this stuff. So you have something called an image gallery and you end up with something like this. So that's not, so that's interesting that this works, but the summary view does not. <clears throat> so I, I don't know if you mind sharing your screen, Tomislav, and we can walk through how we would go about doing this. Obviously, we would need to have news items, which means we'd have to have some images. You can, for, for simplicity, you can grab some news item text from the plone.org website. We're kind of recreating that anyway. And I'll give you, I don't know, maybe six minutes to try it out. Oh, sorry. I am blocking your screen share. So I'm going to stop my screen share. And I also need to make sure that you have permission to sh share. Right, so you do have permission to share. I know you're, there's an issue with your mic, so you may have to type or something. <clears throat> Okay, great, you're logged in already. Uh, so the way it works is when you press enter inside of one of those boxes, it creates a new box. Uh, press it a couple of times when you're when, when it's a bullet list so you have to kind of come out of the bullet list right there's a little plus sign next to where your cursor was a while ago right there you go and you, well you could add an image uh however what okay You should be able to just drag and drop images and they'll upload. So this is not the listing that we want, but it is a block. We've added an image block here. Uh, and there are some options there. You can change the text, the alt text. You can change the size of the image and things like that. Uh, For what we want to do, we actually need to add some news items. So to do that, we would, it doesn't matter whether you add the listing first or you add the listing second. The important thing is that a listing should be there and news items should be there. I suggest you start by adding news items. 
So you'd, you'd have to go to the top where the little save button is and save it. <clears throat> right, right, you're going along. And then what you're going to do is you're going to head to the news section and add some news. So, yes, right, it, right. And, and now you can just say, use the add button on left. <clears throat> and you're going to add some news. You can get your pictures by going to plone.org and you can get texts from there. There's lots of plone news there. Just as a shortcut to um right you can get a lot of news from there it's a good good place to grab some text for testing what i like to do is right click on on one of the images in the on the site and just download it and just save image as. Now, obviously, in real life, you if you're managing a clone site, you may have a content team that goes out and takes the photos, or you provide you've been provided with photos, or or you went out and got pictures yourself or created them. But for the sake of this exercise, we're just lifting images from the clone site. So you, you'll notice that when you paste, it pastes the format in, and it also, for some of them, it does this kind of highlight. It's like a call out. If you click inside of one of those bits and highlight some of the text, you will see that it, the callout is highlighted. If you click on the callout, it will <clears throat> go back to the normal default text. Right. And you can organize the text however you want. Okay, so um, save it at the top left and we have our first news item. Great. Uh, then you can go at it again, create a second news item. And you should be quite comfortable by now. Right, it's almost like you've done this before. <laughs> uh, right, so this news item doesn't have a picture and that's, that's all right. Maybe it's a, a good comparison. We could go to the home page and add a listing block. It's similar to adding an image, but you'll see listing block there. So you'd actually click the edit at the top left. So. Right, so we're now editing this page and we can choose where we want to add that listing block. So remember to, to initiate a block, you have to kind of have your cursor at the end of another block and press enter. Right, and then you're going to click the plus. You'll see listing. And then you can change the characteristics of the listing over at the block side menu. 
So in the block side menu, you can say how you, the style, the variation you want, the criteria you want. So in this case, we probably want a criteria. Um, summary is fine. Um, and for the criteria, we want maybe type, use type and say everything that is news. So, right, there we go. And then we can save at the top left. So you've successfully added a listing and we've also discovered something interesting. It adds a placeholder, um, which may not be desirable unless it's like your brand logo or something like that. And there, this, that's out of the scope of this exercise, but the, those type of behaviors can be changed, like the default image, a placeholder image, and things like that. Or even whether it uses a placeholder image, you'd need to go in and change some JSX inside of Volto, which is the front end that we're looking at. Okay, do you have any questions? Or shall we move on? Okay, great, so we'll move on. All right, so let's jump back to my screen share. So we got something similar to this uh, by going through the exercise of adding a list into a page. Uh, now we're going to move on to user and group management. In Plone, Plone allows users to have different roles. And in this screenshot, for example, the user has the role editor, a user called Jan Smith. Uh, we could have given uh, Jan Smith many other roles. And in this case, we just decided to make, make them an editor. So what's the process? Of typically for working in this way. Well, typically we start by creating the groups that we want. Um, and one common thing that we often do is we set the permissions for that group on certain folders. So in other words, we may create a folder which is otherwise inaccessible to everybody and then make it accessible to our group. Finally, we add users to the group. And by doing that, it makes it possible for a user of that group to access things in a folder. And how do we do that? Um, this screenshot is actually from an older version of Plone, the classic user interface, but it's quite similar to what we have in the new interface. Um, we'd first start by, after the group has been created, we would assign permissions. Um, that group may be able to view, add, edit, or review within a particular folder. And once we've set that, those permissions, it gives that group certain powers on that folder. Now, if nobody is in the group, then it's that group is useless. So it's typical then to put users, add users to a group. And I've, I've given you a general idea of the process. Um, 
to set up users, you, you would go to the group or go to the user. Um, either one works actually. And if you're at the user, you can specify the groups that the user needs to be a part of. And if you're in the group, you search for the user and add them to that group. So in essence, um, the, the, the group mechanism is one way of giving permissions to users to do things. There is another way of doing that. And this is around Plone's workflow system. And the workflow system can work in collaboration with the groups. And the, the key concept here, which we won't go into great detail, is that content can be given different states. So content could be, for example, private. And when content is private, then only an administrator or an editor or whatever the permission is can interact with that content. But content can move from private into other states, such as public in the simplest situation. But in more complex situations, there could be multiple states. Um, Plone, for example, is used in lab information management platforms. And if you can think of a sample at a lab, um, whether that's for food or for medical purposes, a sample passes through several stages. Um, again, it may be something as specific as has has this reagent been added to the sample? And that would be a stage within the workflow. And if the reagent has been added, then a, a special group of users now have permission to view that sample. Just, just as an example. So that, that is the concept. Uh, Perhaps we could try out creating groups and users and putting permissions on a folder. I can demonstrate it and you could probably follow along. Um, so let's do that. So I want to imagine a folder which uh, holds documents for maybe people who are members of the board. So, I want to create a section, a special folder in the root of the site. And I'm going to call it board. Now I'm going to do something special here. I'm going to set board to be never visible in the navigation. That little option will prevent it from showing up in this menu at the top. And it doesn't matter whether I'm logged in or not, board does not show up in the menu at the top. So we now have a top level folder called board. And we're going to create a group called board. And that group will then be allowed to access board. So, Let us add that group. So we will call this uh, maybe board members. Board members. And I will leave it at that. So we now have a group called board members. I'm not going to give them any special permissions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give a, a special permission only on the board folder. So let's save that. 
and let's head to the board folder, which is well hidden. Here it is. Now, remember we said that the procedure involves setting sharing on the folder. That means the group is going to have some kind of special sharing privilege and that happens underneath here. So if you're viewing the contents, under the more menu, there will be a option to manage sharing. And we're going to search for our board members. See if we can find that. And we're going to say that anybody who is a board member can view this folder. Okay. Um, there are others who can probably view this folder. However, those persons would be administrators and so on because the folder itself is private. Um, can we confirm that? We should be able to. So this is a board folder. Let's see its state, it is private. So what we want to do now, we want to add some documents, uh, maybe uh that budget that we were working with previously we're clearly on another site we could bulk upload whatever we need to board i'm not seeing that pdf that we had but maybe there's something special about this pattern now we can test this. Remember this, this document is in the board folder. What happens if I log out? And then attempt to go back to look at that document. Now it says unauthorized. I don't have enough authorization to see that document. Of course, if I'm the administrator, I can see it. So if I go back there this time as an, a full administrator, I can see it. So the last test we want to do, we've created this folder. We've put certain permissions on it. We've seen that an anonymous user can't access it. We could do a test to see whether a logged in user that's not part of the board can't access it. And then finally, we could see whether a user who is part of the board can see it. So, <sighs> The easiest way to do that is probably create two users, uh, one called board member and one called not board member or something like that. So we'll create a user called board member, board member and board member at example.com with a password. Yeah. This is for testing. So we won't go too crazy with the password. Um, this is a board member. So let's add them to the group. Board members. There it is, added. So board member has been added. Let's add another user called not board member. And that user will also
well, in that in this case, this user will not have. So not board member, not board member, not board member at example.com. And one, two, three, four, five, horrible password. You wouldn't use that in real life. Oops, I'm not adding roles, I'm adding groups. And in this case, they're not a board member. So we're not, we don't need to add anything there. Wonderful. So we now have a board member and not a board member. And we have a folder for board members. Let's start by logging ourselves out of this site. And let's see what happens if we log in as not board member. Hopefully I remember the name. So this is not board member. Not board member can't really see much, but we know there is a folder called board. So let's go to the folder called board. Uh-oh. Because not board member is not a board member, not board member is not allowed to see that folder. What about board member? So let's log out, not board member. And let's log in as board member. Let's see what happens. So I'm now logged in as board member. I was told as a board member that I can go to board. And hmm, also not authorized. So there's something wrong with um, our setup. So let's take a quick look and see what we may have done wrong. Clearly we locked out everybody, including the board member. So we were a little too strict. Let's log back in as an administrator and see what we may have done wrong. to prevent our board member from participating. So we're going to take a peek at the sharing. Board members can view. Not sure what else we should have put there. Um, This is, this is an exercise that you should have practiced to make sure you're comfortable with it. But it, what, what should happen here is even though it's private, because board members, I, I wonder if I didn't put the board member in the board member group. I, I think I did though. So let's double check on that. I, I'm almost 100% sure I did that. So board member, yeah, that, I, I think I did. I mean, this, this is mostly just for my sanity to just check. Uh, so here we have board member. Uh, we only have an option to delete, so that's not so good. What about users and groups? What about groups? So we have board members. So another way of doing this, which is not really what I wanted, is we could give the board member, anybody who's a board member, administrative permission. And then every board member would be able to do administrative stuff. 
Um, that's not really what we desire at the moment, but it certainly would be a quick fix if you're not worried about them seeing other things. Uh, Unfortunately, the, the interface is a little bit limited still with the new user interface. And I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll skip this for now and move on. But this is the principle. Um, Uh, so we have about an hour left, and my suggestion for the hour is as follows. I, I think we should take half an hour to try out a challenge. And while you're going through the challenge, uh, keep your eye on categorization date settings. I use them uh, settings to hide board from the front page but there are a lot of other things you can do with it categorization for example you can use it to tag your content uh, so i'm suggesting take half an hour and this is our goal we want to do our version of plone.org there are some limitations to pulling that off with just the out of the box version of plone 6. And so we will accept that. We're not trying to clone the site, but we do want to have some of the functionality. So can we take some of the events from plone.org, for example? Um, so if we go there and we see upcoming events, Oops. Well, not too many upcoming events, but we do have some, well, uh, we do have the 2021 conference. So yeah, uh, so we should keep that in mind. Let's see what we get at all events. Right, all future events, but perhaps all past events, right? So we could get a lot of content from here, maybe grab two events and what else? Uh, create the volunteer section, the volunteer section of the site. I wouldn't even ask you to, um, create the whole of that, uh, but it's, it's the section called community. So again, we're not going to be able to necessarily get it in this structure without doing some modifications to the theme, but we can get a listing a summary, certainly a summary listing. And again, we only need to add maybe two or three of these sections. And then finally, create an image gallery, which you've seen an image gallery done already. So you can try that out. So it's 11.07. Let's see if we can get it done by 11. 30. So I'll, I'll do a check-in at 11.30. I'm going to grab a glass of water. Are you up to the challenge, Thomas Love? Okay, great. So I will set a timer. Let's make it a 20-minute timer. 
and we'll do a check-in after the 20 minutes. Why is my timer not starting? Okay, great. So we have a timer now. And I will mute in. Okay. Um, can't change the view. It's only an event view and no categorization option. Right. Right, 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 right. So as it is today, one of the challenges, and I, I think I can replicate what you're talking about. Uh, I, let's see, let me add an event here. Just to illustrate the problem. So over here, I have some events, which ideally I should probably just make them public. So two events. Okay, that one is public already. And yes, there's only an event view. Uh, the event view is specific to the event. But what if we want to do more? Also, you said something about no categorization option. So let's just look at that. So there is a categorization option. So for example, you could say this event is a sprint. and you should be able to save it as such. So now it's categorized as a sprint. Um, so maybe our, these two events are sprints. Because maybe they contain a sprint. And maybe the other event is a conference as well as a sprint. So maybe we should give it another categorization. Conference, there we go. All right, so yes, I do agree. We can't change it here, however, and that's our 20 minutes. What if for this site or, or this section, we had an associated page? And a listing. All right, so the criteria here by type will be uh, event. So we have our events. If we give it a summer view, or maybe not.
and then we would have some type of an events page. Uh, of course, ideally, we would want a way to take that page and make it the default view of the events. but there's no there's no setting for doing that okay so i don't know if that helps to kind of give some direction and we could even filter it to say sprint events only. Okay, great. Now, again, one of the differences between, at least currently, between the Plone classic user interface and the new user interface is that the, there is no provision for setting an, a page as the default view for a folder. I think it should be possible to edit a folder as a page at some point. Um, and if that is the case, then when you click edit, it would actually present you with a section for the text of this page and so on. That is not the default behavior at this point. But if it were, everything that we might be doing on the summary page, we would have the ability to do on, on the folder itself to give a preview and things like that. Okay, so uh, uh, are you able to show anything else or that was kind of the hiccup that you had, Thomas Love? So we've created an event section. How do we go about creating a volunteer section? For me, I would probably leave that as a top level page. The section is actually called community. So I would go to the top of my site and I would add a new page. And I would call it community. And the community page. And then I would start to populate it. For the sake of time, I'll just put two entries. So there's a membership committee. All right, so I'm going to use a paste that doesn't carry across any anything. All right, so a membership committee. So there are a couple of ways we could do this. We could have individual documents and then create a listing, which is probably the better way to do this. 
what I'm doing right now is kind of manually building out the layout, which is not so great because it doesn't, if we keep adding more community options, this is going to become a problem quickly. So this is very much a very short hand. way of adding two things. Okay. We could then have a corresponding community folder, which is hidden. So, Let's see. Let's exclude it from the navigation. Ah. Here is the trick that we need. Pages actually are able to hold content. So we created a community page and then inside of that community page, we can actually put content. So we could then put our community content. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to copy some news items and put them over there. Okay, copy. All right, so now I'm going to paste. So I have this kind of fake community content and let us change the state of all of that pub content to published. All right, so this is our community page, which doubles as a folder. That too, we're going to make published. And this is our community content. On our community page, we could do our listing. And that listing would come instead of by tag, I mean, uh, instead of by tag or by type, we could do it by location. So location. And in this case, location is community. Let's not use absolute path. Let's use um, community. So anything in community should begin to show up. It's not filtering location community community and community content all 
Okay. So now if we click save, we now have a listing. It's not perfect, but it, it gives us a good idea of the direction that we could take it in. And then finally, the last exploration is creating an image gallery. And for that, that's a matter of having all the images. Um, and let's add a page. We'll call it our images and we'll do a listing and our criteria will be by type and we will select anything that is an image and image gallery there we go uh, now because these pages can hold other things. We could take all of, we could take this more images. And, but actually we don't need to do anything because this, the folder that we created, it's just a matter of moving the folders themselves. So, let's see what happens. Okay. All right. Uh, I th I think we we've we've probably exhausted what I can probably go through for this session. But just to kind of of go go through what we did, we can create image galleries. Uh, one way of creating sections now with the with with the new user interface is actually to create a page and use that page as a holder which is a diff slightly different from how we did it before where we used folders and had display pages so the page itself is the display and the folder so that's that's interesting uh we looked at what is plone and a couple aspects of getting in and out and the folder-based approach. Uh, at this point, we should be able to work with blocks and know what a content type is and understand the benefit of organizing things around content types and what context what it means to do management in context. A lot of the work that we do is done where the objects exist. And this is a different paradigm from possibly having a dashboard where you do everything. Uh, and finally, pages are actually containers. And that's something that I may have been aware of, but didn't pay attention to with the new approach. And that's actually very pivotal to the new approach. It means that you can create a page and then fill it with content and it acts as its own landing page. And that's, that's actually quite useful to be aware of. Uh, so where do we go from here, just to wrap up? Well, in the future, I would say you want to get comfortable with working with add-ons and with theming. Uh, so basic customization with theming and creating your first add-ons to add more functionality. 
Uh, but even before creating your own add-ons, there is a whole set of add-ons. In fact, there is a website called Awesome Volto, which is a good, good place to go if you need to just see what is available today uh, for the Plone 6 front-end stuff. So there's a whole bunch of uh, add-ons for doing different things. So that's going to be worth looking at. Uh, and I think that's about it. We are done with the training for today. Thank you for your time. And uh, go and learn some more Plone 6 and start making some useful things with it. <laughs>